Already, Indian investigators say they've recovered critical evidence. A DVR with recordings from onboard cameras, which may have captured the pilot's actions on the flight deck and the plane's black box, the cockpit voice and flight data recorders. We mentioned the video DVR system that investigators have recovered. Boeing offers a camera system inside the 787. It's in the cockpit, in the galley, it's in the cabin which may let investigators see the flight control settings in the cockpit and whether a pilot might have made a mistake. U.S. airlines do not have cameras on board because pilots' unions oppose constant camera surveillance, though the NTSB has long urged U.S. carriers to install the camera. So as you heard in the NBC story, both black boxes have now been found in the wreckage of the crashed Air India Boeing 787 Dreamliner. But not only that, an even bigger story that I think has been underreported after the crash was the discovery of the completely undamaged and intact aircraft digital video recorder or DVR, which may be the first time in history that aviation safety authorities will be able to actually see the entire accident as it happened from dozens of angles. Now I want to stress, it's early and just like we won't know what's on the voice recorder or data recorder until they have been investigated, the same goes for this amazing DVR recovery. And as you heard in the report, what's even more beneficial to this investigation is that it did not happen in the United States, for example, where the pilot's union still continue to resist any video monitoring anywhere near the cockpit. However, that isn't always the case, and in many other countries, so there's a chance, just a chance at this point, mind you, that authorities will get a, a better look at what went wrong in the cockpit. But like I said, that depends on many variables that still need to be examined. So, with that said, what can investigators hope to glean from this digital video information? Well, first of all, as many of you may know, quite a few airlines, especially those that fly wide bodies, already give passengers access to the video feed from these cameras. It's always fun to watch from the tail or belly camera in real time when your plane is landing or taking off. Well, I guess that is unless your plane is crashing. However, coincidentally, the very first use of cockpit cameras where passengers could actually see what the crew could see in the cockpit was on the ill-fated American Airlines Flight 191. I have a video on that. I'll link that in the description. A DC-10 that crashed on takeoff from Chicago O'Hare on May 25, 1979, when one of the engines actually flew off the plane, claiming all on board. However, it was that incident that also saw the end of cameras on airlines until the next century. Okay, so for those who may not be as up on aviation tech as others, what is this DVR? And how is it different from the cockpit voice recorder or the flight data recorder? Well, airlines can use the DVR in a multitude of ways that best serve the airline. While many airlines offer different packages of the product, let's focus on the Boeing Dreamliner. The 787 Dreamliner, like modern commercial aircraft, offers internal video monitoring. The system is often referred to as the Cabin Video Monitoring System, or the CVMS. The purpose of the CVMS, like I said, is utilized for various reasons. First and foremost, for security. The system provides video and audio surveillance of the cabin and cockpit entry areas for enhanced security and situational awareness, especially at the cockpit entry in the wake of 9-11. Flight deck entry video surveillance system cameras can be integrated to show flight crews who is requesting access to the cockpit door, providing important security information continuously in real time. The video monitoring system also assists with safety from passenger safety either as a result of a health-related incident as well as the more usual drunken unruly passenger-related type. can also help after the fact with incident investigations as a result of future legal actions from the aforementioned drunken unruly passenger all the way up to the unthinkable, such as investigating the crash we are discussing today. Additionally, recorded footage can be used for operational review, training, and analysis. The Boeing 787 utilizes a DVR much like your cable DVR at home to record video and audio signals. The DVR stores the data on removable solid state memory. Typically, the 787's DVR system supports up to 12 covertly mounted digital cameras with integrated microphones. The video and audio can be viewed either live or recorded. These cameras are typically positioned above the cockpit door 
and in the galley for comprehensive viewing coverage. Another great feature is the flight crews can view camera feeds on their electronic flight bags, their EFBs, which is usually a tablet or an iPad display, providing them with enhanced situational awareness. These systems are designed to comply with Boeing and regulatory authority requirements for flight deck door monitoring and overall security. So basically, like every other machine, office, or workspace in the world today, the Boeing 787 utilizes DVRs as part of its cabin video monitoring system, which plays a critical role in enhancing safety and security on board. So with that little DVR tutorial, it's important to keep in mind that many countries, especially the U.S., do not, under any circumstances, allow video in the cockpit, which the FAA and NTSB have been literally fighting for for nearly half a decade now. However, the pilots' unions continue to resist, which, if you ask my personal opinion, is just idiotic, and that stance may indeed change if, and again, this is a big if, but if information gained in this investigation can prove that cockpit video is necessary for the safety of the passengers and crew, then finally, maybe we can get the pilots to stand down on their resistance. But similarly to the U.S. as recent as 2023, the Indian pilots unions and government regulation authorities have been arguing about the need of cameras in the cockpit as well. And like the U.S., the Indian pilots unions have been fighting back, but... Apparently, the DGCA, India's version of the FAA, has still been pushing hard to get cameras in the cockpit, but as far as I know, still haven't gotten their pilots to relent either. So it remains to be seen what they will actually see on these videos. However, with all that stuff out of the way, what exactly might we see from cameras on the 787 DVR security system that may actually help investigate the cause of the crash? Well, first, there are externally mounted nose, belly, and tail cameras that could provide an enormous amount of information from the plane's attitude and trajectory during takeoff and descent and maybe even provide views of the flaps or ailerons. Possibly, like I said, we won't know until we know. Also, the cockpit entrance cameras could possibly capture movements and instrument panels through resolutions and angles that are usually limited. We won't know that either till we know. And in this crash, there are big questions about the condition of the landing gear and the engines. There are external cameras in the belly by the gear on the fuselage, so there's a chance of getting a lot of data from those cameras. And finally, there is the sad reality that, like on so many planes these days, as I said at the beginning, there's a great chance many could have been had they been brave enough to watch their own demise on the TV in the seat back in front of them. But that's a TV show, however, I'm pretty sure none of us would ever want to watch. But like I said, if the DVR proves a valuable tool in investigating this accident, then maybe it will go a long way to how we think of cockpit cameras going forward. But we won't know until the investigation is complete, and let's just hope that comes sooner rather than later. And speaking of knowing, I won't know what you think unless you let me know down below. So be sure and hit that like button. And maybe subscribe and meet me down in the comment section. And as always, until next time. Yeah, this is Maximus.